Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the 14th episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to take a look at the top 10 albums of 2021. My opinion, of course. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to everyone who watched the 13th episode. I took a look at Budget Fountain Penning by jailbreaking and re-inking a Pilot Varsity Disposable Fountain Pen, and I took a pretty good look at the history and design of fountain pens as well. So check that out if you haven't seen it. As always, I want to give a shout out to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's from a song called Through the Electric Mist. Since the last episode, I've tightened the intro up a bit to just the riff to get the show started quicker, but the show outro is the same as it ever was, so if you watch the credits roll, you'll hear the original show music in full. AJ is a great guitarist and independent musician, and he's provided music for this show since the very first episode. The link to his channel is in the show notes, so please go check him out too. Bell's too hard at night. So the business of the day is my top 10 album list for 2021. This is the fourth year running that I've released it as an hourly countdown on Twitter. Always do that on New Year's Day. And for the last two years, I've shot the podcast episode at the same time, edited it and released it the same day, which always makes for a hell of a New Year's Day. Quite frankly, this year I was pushing it just getting the list done for the countdown, so I decided to punt, do this episode later, uh, three months later apparently. But uh, better late than ever, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So, without further ado, my top 10 albums for 2021. Rounding out the bottom at number 10 is From the Sulphur Depths. From the Sulphur Depths is the second LP from Italian death metalers Hell Slave, six years on from their 2015 debut in Endless Path. It's an intro plus nine solid tracks of old school Swedeth inspired riffing, drumming, and musical structures, spiked with some finished chaos, extra bits of technicality, and with virtuoso traditional leads in place of a lot of the thematic lead work you'd expect from the Swedeth lineage. There's plenty of tremolo picking, bulldozing power chords, and well filled traditional and crusty drumming to go around, as well as the contrasting differentials in tempo and feel that make old school Swedish death metal so great. The production is reminiscent of the old Sunlight Studio sound, and the gutturality of the vocals is a bit more defined than usual for the old Swedish style, which just adds to the charm. Standout tracks are Last Nail in the Coffin, Thy Will Be Undone, and Desecration. Coming in at number 9 is Churches Without Saints. This is the first LP in half a decade from Germany's disaster, The Kings of Black Thrash Done the Other Way. It's the latest in a 25-year-long line of rock-solid ass-kicking releases that began with 1996 as a touch of medieval darkness, and as expected, it sticks to the tried-and-true disaster black thrash formula. 80% black metal riffing, 20% thrash riffing, a metric shit-ton of genuinely beautiful twisted dissonant harmonies, positively possessed vocals, and a spacious, mist-drenched, weighty production that would make Bathory weep. One thing you can always count on, disaster always deliver. And their cover art always kicks ass, too. Standout tracks are Failing Trinity, Armed Architects of Annihilation, and Primordial Obscurity. Taking the number 8 slot, we have Violence Unimagined. OG death metal titans Cannibal Corpse are arguably the most successful death metal band in the history of the planet. Officially named the best-selling death metal band in 2011, they eclipsed the 2 million mark in combined album sales in 2015, and they're known as one of the few, if not the only, death metal bands that earn a living just from their music. Their contributions to extreme metal cannot be overstated. They essentially created the brutal tech strain of death metal, along with statemates' immolation and suffocation, and their popularity is absolutely not on the wane. Violence Unimagined, their 15th LP, had Cannibal's best first week sales ever, debuting at number 6 on the Billboard Top Album list, which is absolutely amazing for a death metal band. For a band as long-lived as Cannibal Corpse, they've had relatively few personnel changes. Some of them were acrimonious, mo most of them weren't. But none were as abrupt or as bizarre as the loss of guitar guru Pat O'Brien in December of 2018. Replacing a longtime member as talented as Pat, especially spur of the moment with a tour coming up, would prove to be a huge obstacle for most bands. But Cannibal found the perfect replacement in Eric Rutan, himself an OG guitar god, he started playing death metal guitar in 1989 in Ripping Corpse, played in Midair a Morbid Angel, as well as founding Hate Eternal, 
So he's been around the block plenty of times. Add the fact that Eric had produced four of their previous five albums, so he knows the band better than anybody, and you've got the perfect match. The results speak for themselves. Violence Unimagined is every bit the worthy continuance of Cannibal Corpse's modern era. Standout tracks are Inhumane Harvest, Surround Kill Devour, and Ceremonies of the Flayed. And at number seven, we have Total Death, Total Live. This is the first ever live album from Finnish crust punk band Dispit, and it was recorded in spring 21 during the darkest steps of that thing that we all just went through. It was part of Helsinki Death Fest Total Death Total Live live stream. This album is an absolutely feral distillation of crust punk. Bulldozing, overdriven, high energy crust riffs backed by thunderous tectonic bass lines, both topped by scouring powder and razor blade barks, and pushed by relentless high octane disc beat drumming. Metal Archives list this pit as black slash death slash crust, but musically, all I hear, pure crust punk. The production is big, filthy, and dank with reverb, and the feel is pissed off as a pit bull with the clap. This is top tier crust. Standout tracks are Yo Od the Monin, Vafan Vildu, and Manin Is Sleeps. Taking the coveted number six slot is Excretion of Mortality. The old school death metal revival is, if anything by this point, popular to the point of overpopulation. One of the newer OSDM bands that really rose above the crowd on their debut album, however, was Seattle's Cerebral Rot. 2019's Odious Descent into Decay just missed taking 10th place on my album of the year list that year. It was tied with God's Forsaken Smells of Death and Death Swarm Shadow Lords of Darkness for that last slot, and Death Swarm ended up taking that one. 2021 saw Cerebral Rot release their second full-length album, and it lived up to every bit of the promise they showed on their debut. The songs average a fair bit longer, but they continue the same winning formula. Filthy, cavernous, autopsy-bred, old-school death metal that uses the skilled jointure of fundamentally disjointed elements, like macabre tremolo picking, spidery tremolo haunted leads, syncopated OSDM riffs. All that to produce disorienting off-kilter feel that's regularly counterbalanced by catchy yet creepy power chord progressions, bits of grave groove, and vertebra snapping down-tempo chug breaks. Of course, there's also plenty of discordant harmonics and sick tremolo abuse, and the production is expectedly weighty, cavernous, filthy, and reverb-laden. Standout tracks are Spewing Purulence, Bowels of Decrepitude, and Retching Innards. And Bowels of Decrepitude is a fuck of a song title. Halfway to the top at number five is Rampage from St. Lissa. Formed in 2011, St. Lissa is a Russian thrash band that I'd never heard of until they released their first LP in 2021. Rampage is a seven-track rocket ride of old-school Northeast-style thrash that clocks in under 18 minutes. You do the math. Periodically verging into crossover territory, Rampage is by turns reminiscent of nuclear assault, SOD, and overkill, and all sorts of other good stuff like that. The riffs are lightning fast and lightning lethal, the old school chug breaks would raise a pit in a cemetery, and the vocalist sounds like Billy Milano's long lost Russian cousin Ivan, or something. It sounds and feels like 1985 all over again. This is not a phoned in retro retread, it is the real damn deal. Rampage will absolutely wreck your neck. Standout tracks are No Life, Rampage, and Backfire. Coming in at number four is Slay in Hell. Slay in Hell is Steel Bearing Hand's second LP, and it's essentially the unholy bastard child of nocturnal breed and rigor mortis, if Autopsy slipped it in there too. Song length roller coasters from three to 12 minutes, and the music ranges over a lot of territory as well, from lethal hyperspeed black thrash blitz riffing and contrasting thrash chugs, to spiky frenetic death thrash riffing, to death doom leads progressions and grooves, and a few crusty verse riffs as well all topped by tasty virtuoso lead work. The vocals are effectively varied from a reverb drenched snarly black thrash shout to filthy cavernous death metal gutturals as required, and that further increases the variegated feel of the album. The production falls somewhere between Nocturnal Breed's dirty black thrash sleaze tone and Autopsy's famous cavern filth. This is a wonderful melange of extreme metal. Standout tracks are Lichgate, Tombspawn, until death and beyond. Taking the number three slot, we have Wolves, Rays, and Witches from Mentor. 
Mentor play a masterful, hard-charging, seamless blend of thrash, crust punk, and speed metal that's dispensed in short, high-velocity bursts, and I love it. Their second LP, Cults, Crips, and Corpses, took album of the year on my 2018 list, and their debut would have no doubt been on my 2016 top 10 if it had been on my radar at all. Wolves Raise and Witches as much of a sameness, lots of Motorhead-style speed metal riffing and bass leads, lots of crust riffs, lots of Bay Area thrash riffs, and bits of death metal ranging from Old School Sweet Death to Gothenburg. All this over top of a relentless, propulsive blend of thrash, crust, and death metal drumming. The vocals also show a variety of influences, ranging from a crossover-style, rough, raspy, pissed-off shout to a higher-register, blackish, sneery spit approach. The production is suitably gritty and blackened, but not too much so. Think Toxic Holocaust or Midnight for that. Standout tracks are Fed After Midnight, The Great Grave in the Sky, and Blood is Love. And yes, Fed After Midnight is a Gremlins reference. Coming in at number two is Kill Grid from Enforced. Enforced is another repeat offender on the old top ten list. Based out of Richmond, Virginia, they play that new school blend of thrash and crossover that Power Trip made famous, and they do it pretty much just as well, which is high phrase because Power Trip kick ass. Kill Grid is Enforced's second LP, being the follow-up to 2019's At The Walls, and At The Walls took top spot on my 2019 album of the year list, so anticipation for this release was pretty high and it delivered. As expected, it's chock full of high-speed, palm-muted, chuggy goodness that combines the best of crossover and thrash riffing with plenty of sick, crunchy mid-song breakdowns and sweet thrash leads to boot. All that's pushed by high-speed, punk-influenced thrash drumming, just like the debut. Like Power Trip, Enforced are eminently consistent, and they'd have taken Album of the Year again, too, if it weren't for those meddling death metal kids. Standout tracks are Beneath Me, Kill Grid, and hemorrhage. And finally, taking album of the year for 2021 is 200 Stab Wounds with Slave to the Scalpel. Their first EP, Piles of Festering Decomposition, took EP of the year on my list in 2020, and their first LP takes album of the year this time around as well. They're consistently that good. I caught flack from someone on Twitter for my countdown tweet because I have referred to them as future death metal titans. And that was taken as being unjustified hyperbole, and therefore objectionable. Of course, the band and about a hundred other fans saw their tweet, and everyone dogpiled on them, and it was a whole big thing until they ended up just deleting the tweet to make it all go away. The fact is, though, it wasn't hyperbole. I honestly meant what I said. Like I said earlier, the old-school death metal revival is no doubt an overcrowded scene, but 200 Stab Wounds has something that sets them apart, and that's compositional instinct. They've got the killer riffs and the architectural chops to bind them together to create Frankensongs worthy of their ancestors. They've got the sick disharmonics and the filthy, gut-strown cavernous production. But what sets them apart from most other OSDM bands is the lethal compositional instinct and their impeccable timing. They get the absolute maximum level of sickness out of every riff change, every whiplash tempo shift, every dissonant harmonic, every break. And that allows them to consistently produce death metal that is, as I said on Twitter, battering, bewildering, and utterly filthy. Of course, your mileage may vary, but in my book, Slave to the Scalpel was the album of 2021. Standout tracks, every single damn one of them. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today and listening to me talk about my favorite albums from 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a second and give the video a like. That's an easy way to tell YouTube you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more like it. So thanks for joining me today. And if you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new fucking friends. Till next time, keep those horns up high. Take care.
listening to Old Man Metal's musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics, a South Park podcast called Suck My Balls, The Infinite Fringe, a watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido, Ex Stradivarius guitarist, The Timo Tolki podcast, and the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcast and The Laugh Cast. So check out RatSoundReview.com or search Rat Sound Review on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.